I'm just going to tell you what I did, and I did prime these shares. However, I didn't realize that the primer that I bought was actually oil-based primer, and my um, paint is latex-based. Um, so at first I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? But then I looked online and I saw that you can still use latex-based paint on oil-based primer, but you have to sand it first. So I was kind of relieved. I was, I was in my head, I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Um, but I do have added work. So now that I prime this, I have to sand over it to um, take off, and you can feel it. It's it has like a like a it's like a coating it has on it. Um, so yeah, you can definitely feel it. So we just have to rough it up so that the paint adheres to it. Okay, so it's just two twenty grit sandpaper. Now I have wiped down the, t the chairs with a damp rag to get off all of the dust from the primer. And um, so now it's painting. I'm going to use a um, sponge brush applicator and a regular brush on the parts that need more, um, that have more detail on it. Okay. And remember to always mix your paint. With the oil-based primer, I realized that when I opened it, that's how I realized I had the wrong one. Um, there was a bunch of oil just sitting on the top of the paint. And it's um, very watery, that primer. Now we are going to do the glaze effect on the flower feature in the back of the chair. And what I am using is the Ralph Lauren Faux Technique Glaze. And I had them put black in it. Um, you select a color from the Ralph Lauren um, collection and they mix it in the glaze so you can tint it. So you can see it's black. It's a, one of the black colors. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a foam brush and just really get it in, in there. And then I'm just going to work it in my, my uh, design here. Make sure I get it in all the crevices. Yes, that's what happens when you spend a dollar ninety-nine, or actually less than a dollar ninety-nine, on a foam brush. You just want to make sure you get it in all the little cracks and crevices because that's what's going to give you your detail. Now remember, I've never used this before. Um, so I don't know exactly what's going to happen, if it's going to work the way I hope it works. So 
But if you like like a distressed look or a, a little aged, well, that'd be the same thing. This is good for that. And you can tint it with any color. You can do brown. You can do black like I have. Whatever color you want. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I have a damp cloth. It says it stays workable for between 5 and 15 minutes, so I have a damp cloth. I'm just going to wipe it off. just want it on the flower feature. So I'm going to try to wipe it as clean as possible everywhere else. And you can polycrylic over this. So that's good. Make sure you seal it in there. And what do you guys think? Wipe it off as much as you want, or as little as you want. I really do. I don't know what's going to happen when it dries, but so far I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other ones and the same way. I'm just going to rinse this off because as you can see this is filthy now. And I don't want it to rub off on, on uh, anything else. So I'm going to rinse this off and continue to do it. do the other ones. Okay, so here are the chairs after I glaze them. Now, the glaze stays workable from 5 to 15 minutes. Um, and I chose to wipe it off kind of immediately um, because I didn't want the wood around it to be glazed. I just wanted the flower feature to be accentuated. So I worked it in the crevices and then I wiped it off kind of immediately. 
Uh, if you want that aged look, I'm sure if you leave it on longer, um, you will get more of the aged, you know, look. Um, I also wiped it off um, a lot so that I wouldn't have any lines or anything. Because like I said, I just wanted the flower to be accentuated. Okay, so now that we have painted the chairs, um, and I have done two coats on the chairs, and I have put the glazing effect on the back of it, on the uh, floral uh, design, now we are going to seal it with the polycrylic. I'm not going to do the floral um, feature just yet because I did it late last night. So I'm going to wait until later on to apply that, but I am going to do the rest of the chair. Um, and you remember that my brush that I was using yesterday, the handle fell off, and I was uh, I threw it away, but then I thought, why not use it to mix my polycrylic? So, you see, good things happen, even when you think they're not so good at the time. So, my plan with this chair because we are using the polycrylic and because I have learned my lesson with the polyurethane um, we have to work in a way where it won't overlap um, the chair so I think I'm going to start with this part first and then just kind of work my way on the insides and then um, maybe stop where the uh, the joints are and then come around on the other side and work on the front. So just gonna stir Give it a good stir. And you guys should remember from my um, dining table video that the polycrylic um, is a milky color, but it, it dries uh, clear. And if you don't remember from my dining video, go ahead and check it out on my uh, blog, doingitdiystyle.com, um, or on my YouTube channel, Doing It DIY Style, and Don't forget to follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think I'm only going to do two coats of the polycrylic. But underneath, like how I'm doing this now, I think I'm only going to do one. Make sure you get all the bubbles. It's, it's hard to, to tell with this kind of a brush. But just very lightly. If you press too hard with these brushes, you'll get some bubbles. <clears throat> okay, so what we did was put a coat of the polycrylic on the entire chair. Um, I know that I said we were going to do two coats, but after thinking about it, I decided that these chairs weren't going to get used as much since they'll be in the dining room, which we only use occasionally. Um, so I figured one coat should be enough. Um, also, something that I learned is that um, when applying polycrylic to the uh, smaller details of the chair, you should probably use um, a smaller brush because what ended up happening is I used a one and a half inch bristle brush to get into the crevices and um, little bubbles started um, forming and drying and they can be seen so use a small brush for the details so 
So I'm just going to I put the cushion on the chair and um, I just put it on a table to kind of give it weight. And I'm just going to drill this in. I had to get, you'll notice that the screws I'm using are new because um, I had to get bigger screws because the ones that were in there were just kind of floating around. They weren't really grabbing onto anything. So I just had to use bigger screws. So I just went the next size up. And just make sure that your seat is lined up. Okay guys, we have come to the time where we reveal our chairs. But before, before I show you the chairs and how they turned out, um, I want to mention a few things. Um, these chairs, the whole process has actually given me um, a lot of work. <laughs> um, and it's given me a hard time a few times as well. Um, these chairs... As you know, I got them off of Craigslist for free, but um, they required a little more work than I thought they would need. Um, when I got them, um, a few of the, the joints were loose, so I had to go in and glue the joints back together and uh, screw them in. And then some of the screws, I guess because the chairs were so much older, um, and the screws were being put in and out, in and out, in and out, some of the screws um, left the holes bigger. So I actually had to get a few bigger screws so that they would fit better. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing, as you saw, I had a really hard time getting these cushions on the seats and realized that it was because even though I thought I had cleared the holes with the batting, um, I didn't clear the holes as well as I thought I did. So when you do your um, cushions, make sure you have a good amount of space around each of the holes so that you can get the, um, the screws back in without a problem. Also, another thing to keep in mind is um, the batting. If you use too much of it, you're going to have a hard time getting the seat down uh, flat against uh, the frame where you should be. And another problem will be the screw won't um, reach the, the wood in the seat. Um, so I actually had to have my husband help me. Um, I needed his muscle <laughs> to pull down, push down on the frame while I uh, screwed in um, the, the cushions. And a lot of them gave me a hard time, um, but I got them done. And now it's time to see the chairs. Okay, guys, so here are the chairs completely done and assembled. Um, I have put them around the table already, as you can see. And I pulled one out so you can see clearly. I think it goes with the table really well. What do you guys think? I'm so amazed. Um, earlier I mentioned the, uh, the um, floral um, detail and how we should use a smaller brush. Um, so I'm going to show you the close-up of the floral detail so you can see um, it's like a cloudy white spot right there 
it's actually the polycrylic that's sitting in there and that has dried. Um, they're also, it's also in these little leaves or the details of the leaves. Um, you could see how it's kind of grayish white. Um, and right here, just to give you um, idea of what it what's going to happen if you do use a brush that is too big. Um, so next time I know to use a smaller brush for a detail like this. And, um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. This These chairs have really been a love-hate relationship for me. Um, I hate that they gave me such a hard time, but I really love the way that they turned out. And I hope you do too. So thank you guys for taking your time to learn this process with me. And I will see you um, on our next project. Thanks for learning with me.